Hello, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today is a really big day. After waiting and being very patient, I am finally going to make some stock solutions with a bunch of Jacquard acid dyes. I know that you and I have all been really excited for me to start experimenting with these dyes, with these commercial dyes, and so I can't wait to get started. Today we are going to mix 1% stock solutions, which means that for every 100 milliliters of liquid, we have one gram of dye. I am going to use these one liter glass canning jars to hold our stock solutions, and they should be stable in these containers for a very long time, and since these are canning jars, they should be able to withstand heat in case we need any heat to help our dyes dissolve. Now if we were going to be doing this in a chemistry lab and I wanted to make a 1% stock solution, I would use a graduated cylinder or volumetric flask to make sure that the volume of the final dye was exactly 100 mils or whatever the final volume I wanted. We're going to be eyeballing our volumes a bit here and we're going to be getting close but not worrying about being exact on the scale. The accuracy that you use when you mix the dyes becomes a lot more important if you want to replicate the colors and the shades that you use. In the dyeing community, there are two acronyms that you will see a lot. One is DOS, which stands for the depth of shade, which would be if you're doing a pastel or an extremely saturated dark color. The other acronym that you see a lot is OWG, which stands for on weight of goods, which refers to the ratio of dye to wool or whatever your fiber is that you want to use. When I dye on with food coloring, I know how many drops of food coloring I want to use or the, the volume of a Wilton's icing color to use from feel and experience. There are a lot of established protocols for dyeing yarn and fabric with these commercial acid dyes, especially since these were specifically designed for dyeing fiber. It looks like that typically to dye 100 grams of fiber, you could use anywhere between 200 and 600 milliliters of your stock solution. And if you want a paler color, you would use even less. You could always do a 2% stock solution, but there might be some solubility issues with some of the colors. So I intend to make these stock solutions and then dye by feel. At some point in the future, I'll film a video where I talk a little bit more about the calculations that you can do to determine how much of your stock solution you should use to get a particular shade or color on your yarn. In case you're wondering why I sound muffled, it is because I am wearing a desk mask. I want to keep things as safe as possible, and the risk with acid dyes and really other powders like Kool-Aid too, is that when you're using a lot of them, you could inhale the powders and it's an irritant and that's not good for you. So just like you use separate pots and pans, uh, so that way, you know, in your, to be food safe, why not protect yourself and just add a desk mask on so that way you can avoid inhaling any of these teeny teeny tiny particles. I covered my work surface with plastic wrap just so that way I can try to keep my counter clean and avoid staining it. I'm going to start off with making a stock solution for Jacquard Violet. Purple's my favorite color so that seems like a reasonable place to start. All right. So I open the cap, and you can see I teared my scale already. If, uh, oops, if you're new to weighing things, then that just means that it zeroed it out. So I bought half ounce jars of dye, and that is about 14 grams. So I will be using most of the dye in the stock solution to make a liter of a 1% stock solution. So all the tools that I'm using today 
are dedicated for dyeing. None of these are things that I use for any of my cooking or anything like that. So, oh, I should remove the spoon again. We have 10.1 grams of dye. That's pretty close. Turn off the scale. And now the first thing that the instructions that I have read right online say to do is to make a little bit of a paste with the dye. So I'm just going to use, and I'm using my measuring spoon still because it had dye on it already. And I'm going to do my best to make it so that there are no dry bits left, no clumps or anything like that. This is where a magnetic stir bar would really come in handy. If you're new to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, I want to make sure I point out that this is my first time doing anything with acid dyes. Um, even when I'm doing the tulip tie-dye dyes, I get nervous mainly of just powder, the powders getting into the air, and mainly because of their stain factor. But yeah, I think I probably added a bit too much liquid at this stage. But now I want to add some warm water because that will help things dissolve. And that's kind of a pretty blue color. <laughs> Exhilarating watching me stir, right? So you can see around the edges a bit that there are, you can see kind of some dots maybe. So not everything is dissolved completely, but it actually does not seem to be too bad. Hmm. So what volume of water am I at? Okay, so this is a 500 milliliter cup. I want to keep track of my approximate volume. And then when I'm ready and I think everything is dissolved, um, I have I have a funnel ready to go so I can get it into my container. But that actually seems pretty good. I don't horribly mind if there's a ton of specks or anything, but yeah, that, that feels like it's reasonably well dissolved. So what I'm doing now is at increasing the volume until I get to about, well, maybe I should pour into here first. So I get to about 400 mils. All right, and now I'm going to pour this into my container. And you can see I have a paper towel here because there's been a bit of splatter. Um, trying my best to keep things clean. I got these funnels at Ikea. And I'm very, very glad that I have them. All right. So that was 400. Funny, this color looks very, very blue. Okay, so you can see here that there are some particulates at the bottom. So let's see if we can get those. Oh, that's looking more purple now. Okay. That looks a lot more purple. Oh yeah, stuff dissolves pretty easily. So if you just dumped the powder straight into the container and then added um, if you dumped it straight in and then added water without mixing it first you could end up with like a clump of dye at the bottom so that's why you do this kind of slowly so I'm gonna go up to 
400 mils again. Oh, I still see a clumpy guy down there. You could do all this with warm water too, if you've got something that's really stubborn to dissolve. The nice thing about doing it this way is that I can kind of rinse out the funnel and stuff to get as much of the water and stuff as possible. All right, now I just need 200 more milliliters. And again, everything is approximate. <laughs> Hoping that this is in fact as advertised, yep, a one liter bottle. Waha. And then here's my lid. <laughs> I will sort of draft my hands. My hands are sweating. I was a little nervous about this, but voila. Okay, so this isn't super warm yet, so I'm not gonna but it's not quite room temperature. It's very comfortable to handle, but I'm not gonna screw the lid on super tight yet. But here we go. We have a liter of a stock solution of Jacquard Violet. Now the very last thing I need to do to this is I need to make a label. And I wanna put on the label, I wanna put the date, the concentration, and the color. Thank you so much for watching this video as I make Jacquard acid dye stock solutions for the first time. I'm really excited to start dyeing yarn with these dyes and you know without any other notice this is the video that you can refer to if you wonder where my dye stocks come from. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Chemist Tutorials YouTube channel.